David McCubbin. Here you are today for the first time seeing Fred's painting, mm. the old politician. And by the way, you've even got Fred over your shoulder and you've got the ladies from the Victorian Artist Society uh, all dressed up for the ball. What do you think of the Victorian Artist Society? We'll put it this way. I'm in very good company and um, I love this place. I think it's the heart and soul of Melbourne. The reason being is it's, it's run by artists, for artists. And that's a remarkable thing because so many cultural institutions are not necessarily run by artists anymore. It sort of harks back to an era when gallery directors used to be artists. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, can you imagine, uh, Fred, that later, later on you're going to do some drawing for us, but you know, just the feeling of, uh, of the Victorian Artist Society and the fact that we have this painting now turning up uh, says something, doesn't it? I think it's, it's extraordinary that the memory of a place like this can go back to the 1880s and a building like this what was past is almost a here and now. And I think that's the magic of bringing a painting like this back. I know Fred's looking over my shoulder, but I'm not intimidated at all because I think that basically we're still the same sort of people and more or less we're still the same sort of city. Now when this society started, it was for everyone from every walk of life and yeah. it's still the same. Is that what you like about it? I love it. I think it's, it's, it, cause it, 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 it's part of that great founding sentiment of Melbourne the enthusiasm, the vision, the imagination, and it's something that I don't think we have in such a quality these days. It's driven by different things. That's what I love about this. It's just, it's like entering into a familiar old room, several familiar old rooms. And of course, a lot of the people who are now coming, our school is actually full. So, <clears throat> what Fred and Artie Streeton and all those guys, Tommy Roberts, what they started off, still continues today and is very, very vibrant and still run by the artists. Well, I think that's just where it exactly should be. And, and, and all great institutions keep true to their founding principles. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, also a bit uh, like um, when people walk down the street, you know, you look at the building, what do you think? I mean, a lot of people say, I'm not sure what's in there. Well, I mean, that's the good thing about it, because it's a little bit enigmatic, whereas, you know, in contemporary society, if it's a gallery of any description, it's got to look as big as the MCG, but that's what I love about this. Like Melbourne, the discovery is walking in the door. It's what happens to the interior that's more important than the external, but it's a lovely old building, just the same. And, of course, for artists, uh, members of the society, which this 500 of uh, for them to have their works displayed, like we've got a contemporary exhibition yeah. now. So we've got Fred here from uh, the 1800s <laughs> early. Yeah. And <clears throat> this is all being launched amongst a, a whole gallery full of contemporary paintings. I couldn't think of anything more appropriate because, once again, there's, there's something really dignified about this because, because it's artist-based, you're allowing the public to draw their own conclusions and, and insert themselves in a part of this story. And that's what I love about it so much. It doesn't matter whether you're from the 1880s or contemporary, still part of that line. And that, that's great fun, because there's a great sense of other stories to be told within that, which incidentally have a lot to do with art. One of the, uh, one of the themes about this uh, society is the fact that we're also getting a lot of younger people who have moved into the, into the city now, yeah. who are coming and doing art classes. Uh, and there's a mixture of ages in the classes, which is probably a bit like the, the early start of the place. That's fantastic, um, because I don't think there's anything worse than a monoculture. Um, you create a monoculture, you get Docklands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen here, which is wonderful. And that's well, we are, we are going to be preserving uh, the building, and the very room that you're sitting in, David, is where Ellie Melba's uh, singers used to do their first concerts. Wow, that's extraordinary. So you are really, you are really surrounded by something very special. And Anne Nellie Melba is, once again, a monumental figure in Australian culture. It's amazing. We don't have recordings of Nellie Melba, not like paintings, which are visual recordings. And she's still absolutely a colossus. There you go. Yes, well, uh, the other thing is, do you want to give us your your thoughts about drawing, you said something the other day about drawing and you're saying, uh, you're saying to us that 
you think Australia, in some ways, you know, especially in the professions, is losing the art of drawing, what's the danger with that? Actually, it's funny, you know, because I was thinking about this last night, and, and, and drawing is just another tool. The clever thing is, and a good surgeon will tell you this, that you can't really be a good surgeon unless you know your anatomy. And it's amazing, actually, I don't know why I got on the surgeon analogy, but how many surgeons I know actually use their hands? They're superb craftsmen. The point is, between your hand and your head, it's more than just a sensory thing. It becomes an intuitive thing and drawing on your subconscious. You can't get the same depth, I believe, of observation and translation into language necessarily if everything you do is computerated in design. It's like the difference between music that's composed by people and a music that's composed by um, a clever mathematical algorithm. Um, the two are chalk and cheese, and I think that we run the risk of losing ourselves when we try and define ourselves once again by one singular form of expression. That's the monoculture coming in. And the, we all know the most interesting and articulate people are usually people who can speak two languages or have two perspectives on life or have a whole life experience that they've encountered and learn to gauge their own singular view which they can share with others. And I think that's the whole point about drawing. It doesn't matter if you're a good drawer. The curious thing is everybody draws and everybody's drawing style's different. So it's one of those quirky things that I think gets lost in our fixation with standardisation. There you go. So standardisation and the last question uh, which uh, should bring some response from you. Not to could you, you could you could you imagine could you imagine uh, um, Fred and, and uh, Tommy Roberts and Art and that in the in the art room and uh, in their day what would happen if someone had walked in with a, a, a laptop computer or an iPad? I think they would be absolutely flabbergasted. What is this? But if the person hung on to it. So many people do for the next 24 hours. I think they'd be bored witless. <laughs> the impression I did get when they were all together was they took their art reasonably seriously, but in the spirit of great fun, and they probably would have wanted to know where the nearest pub was. And I think that's probably changed a bit since the 1880s. David McCubbin, thank you very much. Thank you, for this Ron. Very special day here. Thank uh, you the so much. Painting and also the announcement of the building restoration. Well, that's the important thing, and I think it's bigger than all of us, um, is to see that this tradition, this building, this institution survives and thrives in the future. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, everybody.